wouldn't it be great to go through studio registration without the stress? I mean, I asked myself this question a few years ago, and while it took a few experiments, I'm now at a stage where it takes very little admin time to spring into registration. So in this video, I'm sharing the best tips I have for saving time, energy, and yes, money by setting up systems for studio registration. Now, if we haven't met before, I'm Rosemary Penner from The Unfinished Lesson, and I want a life where I can have it all. Balance in juggling work and family life with our twins, plus having time and energy to be creative in my teaching. The Unfinished Lesson started as my way of helping other independent music teachers get balance in their life and creativity in their studio, and you can have it both. So be sure to watch to the end. I'll be sharing a resource that will help you take away the usual stress of studio registration. You'll impress clients, new and returning, with how professional everything looks and how supported they feel the whole time. Tip number one, think about the big picture. So how you set up your studio registration affects everything in the course of your year. Make a list of what you wanna change from year to year. Now, I like having a running list of teaching and admin ideas. The reason for this is I'm going to come up with an idea at a completely wrong time when I'm not thinking about registration. I'm not thinking about, you know, an idea for next year. So rather than stressing about it, I just make sure that it's written down. So let me know in the comments, what is one big change that you want to make from this year to next year? Number two. Use tech to streamline the process. Look, don't recreate if you don't have to. I used to spend so much time creating PDFs of policies and the video and photo release forms and all sorts of stuff. But if you don't have to, why do it? Now, I personally love using Google Forms. There's less mistakes when I need to transfer that information. So for example, like their address to one spot to another spot. It's really easy to copy and edit from year to year. It's easy to make a form for current clients versus new clients, which I used to have the same form and it didn't really fit either category. And also if we use technology, it allows clients to fill it in anytime, anywhere without getting carpal tunnel syndrome, which by the way, was the running joke in my studio because there was so many forms to fill out and post-dated checks. Basically, what I'm saying is don't give them reasons to say no, or I'll get to it later. I used to have clients say, oh, you know what? I don't have time to fill it out right now. Now I go, hey, no worries. I'm just going to really send you the link. If you can just fill it out while I'm teaching your child, or you know what? I know what you mean. Like life is so busy. But, you know, at my kid's soccer game, I was actually able to fill out something that we needed to fill out for another activity. If you have a chance at an activity this week, it won't take very long and you can get that filled out. Using technology streamlines the process both for you and for them. So tip number three, set expectations. The goal of your studio contract or policies, and by the way, use whatever word you want, but the goal is that your clients know what you expect of them and what they can expect from you. It is no more complicated than that. So here's a few tips in terms of that. Create win-win scenarios. So for example, makeup lessons. A lot of teachers would say that they don't do makeup lessons. And I would say in some ways I don't, but of course there's always reasons that somebody can't attend lesson. So win-win scenario. If it's less than 24 hours, we do the lesson online. Now, this is something I had in place before I was teaching online full-time. Um, you could do, if they give you enough notice, that you'll maybe do music labs for them. Um, I really like digital escape rooms because I can send those off with families. And even if they're not going to be by a piano, the kids can still fill them out. The other part that I like to make sure in my studio contract is to put consequences in place that matter. So there's a pretty hefty late fee. 
And it's not, oh, well, it's due on this day. And if you don't pay it within the two weeks from when it's due, no. If it's due on the first, at the end of the first, so on the second day of the month, they get the late fee. Why did I do this? Well, I didn't want to chase late fees. I didn't want to chase payments. I had read about so many studio owners and teachers that were saying they hadn't been paid in a month, two months, three months. Why? I, I don't want to spend time with that. So there's a hefty late fee. And guess what? People only paid it once and then they never paid late again because they didn't want to pay it. So we want to create win-win scenarios, but on the things that we really want to put our foot down about, make sure there's hefty consequences in place so that it just doesn't happen again. And back to tech, one of the things I learned when I moved my studio fully online is to actually put everything in one form. So in my Google form, there is everything. It is all the registration information, um, you know, all the studio policies. There is, um, you know, all, all the things that they need to know kind of about how many group lessons, all that stuff. And then also um, it has to do with what times and days that they want. It's all in one form. It's called a contract and it's clearly stated in there. Because it's one form, it's one link for me to send them. And because I set it up very carefully, it doesn't take them too long to fill it out. So tip number four, be proactive in answering questions. What is the biggest question that clients ask during the year? Important dates. You might say, oh, well, it's like, you know, recital questions or it's registration questions or it's group of lesson questions. Yes, but they all have to do with important dates. They all have to do with dates in your studio. So here's the thing. Being proactive means you're going to have multiple places for parents and students to find these. Now, in the comments, I want you to type in which of these you use in your studio already. Your website, uh, newsletters, practice pages, and social media. These are the four places that I make sure. Now, on my website, I know my clients are probably not checking there. But you know what? Other people might check there. And it's just better to have it there. Um, in the resource I'm going to share at the end of this, there's actually information in terms of how to do this so that you're not spending extra time. I do monthly newsletters. Um, so I make sure that all the important dates for the next three months are on there. Practice pages, because guess what? As much as we would love people to read our newsletters, sometimes they don't. So having it on the practice page also works. And when all else fails, social media. So let me know in the comments, which of those are you using? Tip number five, set clear boundaries. Now, this is one of the biggest struggles during this time of year, especially if you haven't been proactive in answering questions and really setting expectations. So this is a time when I used to get you know, emails and calls from clients with questions. And I would spend my weekend having to get back to them about stuff. And because I wanted that time, I wanted that work-life balance. I made sure that I started setting really clear boundaries because I also realized that without intention and planning during studio registration, this struggle continues throughout the year. Decide what days and times you want to teach and then stick to it. So if somebody says, well, yeah, but you know what? I really would like it if we could have lessons on Friday at six, like that works best for our family. In my studio, I would say, you know what? I understand, however, that's not a time that I teach. That's a time for me to spend with my family. And I understand that I'm not gonna be able to give you full value if I'm teaching outside of the hours I have set aside. Decide when you're gonna answer emails, texts, and calls, and then stick to it. I know this all sounds, it's all easier to say than it is to do, but again, if you do not wanna be answering messages at 10 o'clock at night, don't. You can let clients know both returning and new 
that you will get back to them. You, they are important to you. What they have to say is important, but you're going to get back to them during set times. If you think that this doesn't work, I can tell you I've done this for years in my studio and the only clients that complained were the ones that took up 80% of my time, maybe even more of my time. They were not the clients I wanted sticking around anyways. So most clients, while they're not thinking about your studio all the time, they like you. They want you to have enough energy and to be happy and fulfilled so that you do a great job teaching their kids. What you can do is remind your clients Again, you want them to get full value for their tuition. And that means you need to step away from your studio on a regular basis. The last tip I'm going to give in terms of setting clear boundaries is put a deadline in for early bird registration. I used to ask my clients to register, and then it would be months later, they would finally fill out the form. Okay, so yeah, we've got a time at like our usual time, right? And then I would scramble trying to bend over backwards that they could have that time back, but I thought they weren't coming back. So I'd given it to somebody else. This probably sounds familiar, doesn't it? So giving them a reason to register before the wait list means, hey, you get a benefit. You get to keep your spot or move to a new spot if that's what you want. But once that wait list registration opens up, you have to take what's left. And for the wait list, this works really well as well, that they have a deadline before you open it to the public. That way, if the wait list doesn't get back to you, somebody on the wait list doesn't get back to you, it doesn't matter because you can just give that spot to whoever happens to call, email, text, you know, DM, whatever it might be, that you fill up your studio and you're not waiting for other people. These boundaries are going to keep you a lot happier. They're going to save you a lot of energy. Um, and they're going to save you a lot of time versus constantly having to run after other people, which none of us wants to do. All right. So as promised at the beginning of this video, I have a resource that'll help you take tips from this video and banish the stress of studio registration. And that resource is spring into studio registration with these easy tips. I'm going to share the essential registration documents that you need, plus tips to save time, energy, and money for each. I'm going to also give you some tips for re-registering clients, kind of like what I talked about in this last tip, and registering brand new clients. You're not going to want to miss out on this series, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.